Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Tiffany Hansen with Hooked for Hope. Thank you so much for joining me today. In this video, I'm going to show you how to make my autumn throw blanket. Oh my gosh, the colors in this blanket are so rich. They're so bold. They absolutely remind me of that fall autumn season. Uh, this will look amazing being draped over any couch, any chair, or laying across any bed. It is thick, it is warm, and it is super easy to make. Any beginner level crocheter could absolutely make this blanket, no problem. If at any point in this video you do like what you see, please push that thumbs up button. And if you haven't yet, subscribe to my channel. That way you don't miss any of my videos. I release two brand new videos every single week covering a wide range of different types of crochet projects, and you're not going to want to miss out. The pattern is actually located in the notes section below. It's a very simple pattern, so you could absolutely just watch this video and get it. It's going to be really easy. Also in the notes section below, I'm going to include a sizing chart that will include different size projects that you can make or different size blankets that you can make with this pattern and an estimated foundation row chain count that would go with that blanket just to make it easy for you to dive right in and not have to worry about it. All right, let's go ahead and go right to what materials you're going to need to make this beautiful blanket. The materials that you're going to need to make the autumn throw blanket are a size 5 textured yarn such as homespun, not the thick and quick homespun, just the original homespun, or yarn bee fireside yarn. You will also need a size 4 weighted yarn or an Aran yarn that is not textured. Examples of yarn that you could use are a Karen Simply Soft yarn or a yarn bee soft secret yarn from Hobby Lobby. Uh, the exact colors that I used to make the autumn throw blanket was Yarn Bee Fireside in the color Mandarin and Yarn Bee Soft Secret in the color Honey. Uh, I'm going to have links in the notes section below that will get you directly to the exact yarn that I used. I am not affiliated with Hobby Lobby, but I want to make that super easy for you to find exactly what yarn that I used. Okay, I'm also going to have in the notes section exactly how many skeins that I used for the blanket I made. The blanket that I made was a throw blanket on the smaller side. So orig an original approximate throw blanket will be 60 inches wide by 72 inches long. My blanket ended up being 56 inches wide by 66 inches long. So I'm just shy of hitting a, an adult throw blanket, but I still find it comfortable. If you want to make a bigger blanket, I will address skein needs in the notes section below for you. Uh, you're going to need a crochet hook size P or 11 and a half millimeters. You need a pair of scissors. And I'm going to let you weave in your ends however you want to weave in your ends. In the middle of the blanket, I'm going to be using the invisible knot, which I am loving to join yarns together in the middle of the blanket. But to weave in your beginning tail and your end tail, go ahead and weave in your ends however you want. But this is a great project to use your fabric glue for because the fabric glue and the textured yarn, they work great together. It just, they bond well, totally invisible. It's just a great pairing. But again, just an option, not a necessity. All right, let's go ahead and get started on making this beautiful blanket. The autumn throw blanket is worked with two different types of yarn. It's worked with the highly textured yarn and a non-textured yarn. So something I've heard from a lot of people is it's hard to work with a textured yarn because the stitches get lost. It's hard to find where you put your crochet hook in the work. A trick that I've learned is if you pair a non-textured yarn with your textured yarn, everything becomes a lot easier to work with. You can see your stitches and it's easier to find where things need to go. Another thing that I have found is when you work two different kinds of yarns together, the non-textured yarn with the textured yarn, you can have a lot of fun with colors. If you use a non-textured yarn color, that complements a color within the pattern or the textured yarn, the whole blanket just pops and the whole level of the blanket gets raised a whole other level. It's really, really neat. All right, so to make this blanket, we're going to pair these together. We're going to make our slip knot and attach it to our crochet hook. Perfect. In the notes section below, I have included a chart that has approximate foundation row chain counts depending on what blanket you want to make. The blanket that I made for the autumn throw blanket had a founded foundation row chain count of 86 chains. Okay, so if you're making the exact blanket that I made, 
you're going to want to chain 86 chains. I'm just going to do an example swatch for you so you know exactly what to do in the blanket. It is super, super easy. So I'm only going to make 20 chains. Uh, this blanket does not have a multiple chain count requirement. So go ahead and make as many chains as you need if you want to just wing it and make your own blanket. Go for it, okay? I'm going to start with uh, chaining 20. Okay, we have just finished making all of the chains that we needed to make the sized blanket that we are working on. You're going to make one half double crochet in the second chain from your crochet hook. If you're trying to figure out, okay, where is where are my chains? With your foundation or chain, that is going to be the trickiest part, guys. And let me just instantly make that a lot less tricky. Look at the bottom. Look at the bottom of the chains when you're looking at it, okay? So wherever you see that solid color yarn, that is going to be one chain. So for example, I see the bottom solid color yarn, that's my first chain. My solid color yarn, that's my second chain. There's my third chain, fourth chain. You can see the V shapes. Oh, this one got covered by the textured yarn, but if I move it, then I can see, oh, there's my solid color yarn. There's my next chain. Next chain. Bottom of it, next chain, next chain, next chain. So if you're having trouble with that textured yarn, still feeling like it's getting in your way, look for the solid color yarn to guide you. Okay, so to do the half double crochet, we're going to yarn over, going to find, okay, there's the first chain, here's the second chain, so we're just going to go right above those two yarns there. Yarn over and pull through all of the loops on your crochet hook. Great. Okay, so yarn over, we're going to put one half double crochet in each chain all the way down, finding my next bottom loop there. There we go. Yarn over, finding my next bot oh, bottom loop there, right there. Okay, yarn over, next chain, finding the solid. There we go. Okay, so you are going to end this row one with one less stitch than you chained. So, for example, I chained 20 chains. My first row, I'm going to have 19 stitches. And the reason why it went down one is because my 20th chain was my turning chain to get me over to row one. Okay. So just continue down. Count, that way you can make sure that you don't miss any stitches. And honestly, guys, this blanket pattern is very, very forgiving. So even if you do miss a stitch in your foundation row, you'll be fine. Just make sure in your second row that you count. And if you notice, oh, I'm down a couple stitches, then go ahead and just add a few stitches to make up for it. This is one of those blankets that hides mistakes really well. The only thing it won't be able to hide is if your work starts to go like this or like that, okay? So that's where counting will really help prevent the flaring or the caving in from happening. All right, and that's 18. And my last stitch right here is 19. Beautiful, okay. So once you've reached the end of your row, honestly, in my opinion, your first row off of your foundation row is the hardest row because you're trying to find everything through that first chain. Every row after this is going to be cake. You're going to chain two. One, two, turn your work, and you're going to put one half double crochet in each stitch 
all the way down your work. Making sure you keep count, so whatever number of stitches you needed in that first row, for me it was 19, you're gonna make sure that you have the exact same number of stitches in row two. So I'm gonna need to make sure that I have 19 stitches in my second row, just to know that I stayed on count. So you're gonna yarn over in that very first stitch, insert your crochet hook. So right in the front of the work where you see, you see that gap that stitch right there. Okay, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through all the loops. Okay, next stitch right here. Right there. Yarn over, insert your crochet hook, pull through, yarn over, pull through. Okay, if you're still needing just an extra guide on where your stitches are, Pull your stitches apart a little bit and you'll see, oh, there's a half double crochet right there. Oh, there's the top of it. Got it. There's my space. There's my stitch. Half double crochet in that stitch. Okay. There's my stitch. And that's it, guys. You just half double crochet in each stitch all the way across, keeping count. If you do notice that you are short a stitch or two and you do need to add a stitch in order to keep your count, here's what you would do. You would just make one half double crochet in a stitch and then make another, a second half double crochet and insert it into that same exact stitch and that would be called a half or an increase half double crochet. Okay, and there you just added a stitch so now you can stay on count. Depending on how many stitches that you need to add, if you needed to add two stitches, so spread it out a little bit, put like one single half double crochet in between your increases, but you would put one half double crochet and then in that same exact stitch, you'd put a second half double crochet and then once you have reached your count, say I needed to add two more stitches in order to keep to my 19 stitches that I needed to keep count, boom, you have just made yourself back on track and ready to continue going with your work. 18 and even this stitch right here, 19. Another reason why it's really good to keep count, guys, is because you want to make sure that that stitch on the end doesn't get forgotten about because it's really easy. Here, let me even back it up. It's really easy for it to look like, oh, that's my last stitch. I didn't need to count. I'm good. Whereas in reality, if you missed that stitch there, it's already starting to cave in. Okay, so keeping that count is going to be really, really important. It helps you out. Okay, so just finished row two. Moving on to row three, we're chaining two, turning our work. Now row three through row 87, you're just putting one half double crochet in each stitch all the way across. That's it, that's the pattern, guys. Super, super easy. Uh, that is the dimensions, the number of rows to make the autumn throw blanket that I created. Uh, in the chart below, it will tell you how many rows you need to make to accomplish the size of blanket that you're trying to aim for. But yeah, that's it. So let me actually go ahead. I want, the next thing I wanna show you is how you can join yarn with the invisible knot. So let me just go ahead and dive into this row a little bit and then okay so let's pretend doo, doo, doo. okay let's pretend that you're crocheting 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 and you're noticing uh oh I'm running out of yarn and I need to attach more yarn onto my skein so that way I can keep going I'm not done with my blanket yet okay so the invisible knot how you would do it so you have your yarn from your project, your working yarn, facing this direction. You'll have your new yarn that you want to attach facing that direction, okay? Bud them up together, 
take these two, this side right here, wrap them both, see both of them, around two fingers, then take the tail, the tiny tail, and I want you to tuck it from the top to the bottom facing your fingernails. Okay, there you go, and then gently pull to make that knot. Move to the other side, to the other tail. You're gonna wrap both of these around two fingers. Find the tiny tail. Tuck it under your fingers from the top to the bottom. So it's poking out towards your fingernails. And you're gonna pull that through to make a knot on that side. Okay, now take this string, take this string, gently pull them together, and now you have a really, really strong invisible knot. Grab your scissors, and you can actually cut your strings that short. And it is strong, it's not going anywhere. Perfect, okay? Now when you're doing the same thing, the same invisible knot with your textured yarn, the textured yarn does want to catch. So what I recommend, we're still doing the yarn attached to your work going this way, the new yarn going that way. Make it smaller, okay? Don't give yourself so much room that you're gonna have to you know, pull apart. So make yours a little bit smaller. Bud them together, two strings, wrap them around two fingers, take the tail, tuck it so that way it is facing towards your fingernails. Move your fingers gently, don't even pull all the way, like leave it a loose knot, okay? Do the same thing to the other side. Take the tail, tuck it so that way it is now facing towards your fingernails. Gentle knot, okay? So now you have two loose knots. When you pull, now when they're butted up together, now pull it tight. If you pull the tail, it makes it tight and then you pull the strings. Ugh, so strong. Ugh. Okay, grab your scissors. Cut your yarn. Fabulous. Okay, now when you work your yarn and you continue going, oh, okay, so there's one join and there's the second join. Check this out. You can't see them. I mean, I'll point to this one so that way you can be like, oh, there it is. But the black one is, where's the black one? Black one's back here. But can you see that? No, it's invisible. Your join is invisible. You have nothing to weave in, so you're done. You don't have to worry about it at the end of your work. And then you just keep going. Isn't that so cool? Okay, that's it, guys. That's how you make this blanket. You don't need a border. If you want, you can put a border on it, but you honestly don't really need one. Um, there you go. If you have any questions, feel free to ask me in the comment section below. All right, guys, that is it. That's all you have to do to make this beautiful blanket. If you enjoyed this video, you might also enjoy my other blanket videos. Also check out this video, which is just a recommended video for you to watch. Thank you so much for joining me today. I always love crocheting with you. I hope you have an amazing day and I will see you with my next video. Bye guys.